Um, your students know if you care. Um, and I think they know if you don't care. And I think they know if you don't care and you try to fake it. Um, you know, their radars are pretty good with that. So I would encourage you to do everything you can um, to prepare, to care for them, and to be a blessing. All right, types of teachers. These you just can't pigeonhole everybody. These are a little bit caricatures, but I want you to think about them because you may fit into one of these and you don't think you do. All right? I have, and I ain't going to tell you which ones. <laughs> so um, kind of making light of some things that we want to avoid. And then some of these that um, I hope that we can all grow into um, as we mature. Um, the trying to be cool teacher. It's important to them to be relevant to the student. And um, this is not a thing that for 22-year-olds or 18-year-olds. Oftentimes, it's the 30, 35, 40, where we start feeling like, well, I kind of still like to be kind of cool. Um, you're not. And, um, <laughs> and so we're, we're kind of relevant. Some problems with, and you know what it is. I mean, um, so you dress like it was cool when you were cool 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm not trying to teach you how to be cool, but it, it, not only are you not, but the students are like, this is really awkward. If you just be a, a man you know, or a lady. Um, part of this is oftentimes these kind of teachers have short-lived popularity. They need to be very popular for three weeks of school and then something just clicks and it's not that attractive to students really. And um, I've known, noticed that these kind of teachers can gain classroom management quickly because the students think they're pretty cool and then after two or three weeks you're pretty cool doesn't help them to know when they can or can't talk or when they can or can't do anything and then it's a nightmare and they don't favor that teacher anymore. So teacher B is trying to be just like a student. This is different than trying to be cool. Um, remember, even if you're an 18 year old teacher, um, the students probably view you more closer to the age of their parents than you realize. They really do. Um, my band director who I loved in high school, um, he was about 28 years old, I was 14. My parents were 34, 36 years old. And I was pretty sure they were all the same age. Think about that. I added, you know, eight years to the guy's life. They're just all adults. So I know some of us think, yeah, I'm 28, I'm young. The students are looking at you thinking, you're 28. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're old. And so um, I just wouldn't worry about it. Um, it's tempting sometimes even for older adults to try to dress and act like students and do the things that they do. Remember, remember when you were that age, which is such a valuable resource, remember what you did. Oftentimes they're doing things because the other students are doing it, not really because they even think it's that cool. It's what you do. And so I think there's some destabilizing, there is a destabilizing effect for them trying to see adults try to be like they are when they're being like they are just to fit in. And they might just hate it. So, um, so um, my band director, um, you know, like he was 28, which in my mind, honestly, he was the same age as my parents. He showed up once, there was a musical performance, and we saw him, and it was outside. And he came up, and it was in the um, mid-80s, and he had these super long short pants, and that's what people wore. And he said something about him. He said, do you all like my short pants? We well, didn't say that. We just said shorts. And I just was thinking, I can't believe you did that. And it wasn't immodest or anything. I mean, they were longer than short shorts or whatever. But, I mean, he was trying to look young, and I just remember thinking I loved him. Um, I still do. I love all my teachers. And um, I just think, I thought, this is just weird. Why is he doing that? I was really disappointed. It kind of took him down a few levels because he was really trying to be relevant that way. Anyways, um, my children, and you don't need to try to guess who I'm talking about. I've taught in the Baptist school, a non-Anabaptist non evangelical Baptist school. I've taught in Mennonite schools. I've taught in Beachy school. I taught in a charity school. And now I teach in a school where we have everything. We represent about 30 different churches, um, Mennonite denominations, and about seven or eight different Mennonite denominations within the 30 churches. So don't try to guess. So my, my children said once they had a chapel, and a teacher got up and started talking about how young he was and how he was actually closer in age to the students um, you know, than he was to the rest of the teachers. And um, he was very relevant with technology. And he said, I'm just like y'all. I have Instagram. So we all have Instagram, okay, and Facebook. And he went down the list of things, and um, my children came home, and they were just like, I just can't believe he said that. Why was he trying to, to show us that he was, you know, just like a student? And um, honestly, if he was two years older than them, see, they probably thought he was 22 or 23 until that. So, um, you know, if you are one of those adults that can be relevant just because you are, then that's one thing, but yeah, don't try it. 
You know, don't try to be just like a student. I'm trying to be an important authority. This is the person um, that's like, I am a professor. And you can tell when you meet them that they're the professor. They're smart, and you're dumb. <laughs> and I mean, just simple things that they say in life are just, I, I'm smart, it's all with authority. And um, they tend to view teaching as an opportunity to like be in charge of other people and to be important. And um, they want to appear very wise. <laughs> I put in there, which I think is funny. They're like, they're like a sage, like just this wise old person. And that's like their thing. <laughs> I mean, why would you want to do that? And um, it's very important that, they, that you view them as smart and they use like big words to try to impress you. Have you ever known somebody that was truly intelligent, that was really, really smart? And um, they didn't use big words. And you can just tell, as soon as they open their mouth, like, this person is really quite brilliant. And they don't try to use words or, or use fancy words wrong. <laughs> that makes it worse. The next one um, tends to be a guy, doesn't have to be, is the flirt. And um, I, d I don't want to make light of this one. Um, it's, it's creepy teacher. And you know, I don't think you, um, you, you realize this, why it's happening. And um, I put this somewhere else. <laughs> Anyways, um, this very well could be the, the first time when a, a guy teaches that <laughs> women have ever paid him any attention in his life. Suddenly you're in charge and you're the teacher and you're speaking and girls are looking at you. And um, it, you know, in some ways you can make it humorous, but I just don't think guys process it all. And I think it can lead to irreverent, probably at first for sure, um, accidental behavior or something like that and um, you know well we, we're gonna actually talk about this more specifically so um, I just put um, you know don't sit with girls just don't sit with girls I don't like to sit with lady teachers it's it's just weird and inappropriate anyways um, don't ever be in a closed room Billy Graham rule we'll talk about that in a minute um, people are watching you even if you feel like you're keeping it professional when you talk to the same person over and over about school it's just it's awkward and it's just just not right, um, and it's I think pretty hard to shake that image even if you you know you mend your ways. So, um, the mature, secure, stable human being, usually interesting people. Um, it can take a little while of maturing to get to be that way because you do want to work through being cool, being like a student, the important authority guy. If you were a flirt, then that. Um, so at one point in my life, I was like cooler than I am now. Don't laugh, okay? I was. <laughs> All right, I was in my early 30s, and um, you know, I, I really thought I knew how to relate to students and, and young people better than people that were older than me. And um, I was a music teacher, and um, I, I dressed a little bit cool. Don't mock me, okay? I'm just saying. And so um, I noticed that sometimes I had one or two students like will drop my class. For this other student, for this other teacher that was about 45 years old, he had a little man beard, um, kind of nerdy hair, if you know what like, like geek hair is, and um, soft-spoken. He's very, very intelligent. And then he taught um, advanced math and he taught psychology. And you know, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm the one that kind of, forgive me, okay, I don't think like this anymore. It was a long time ago. And um, I just thought, well, I'm going to his class. I mean, I'm like, cooler. And, and I, I re, I'm more relevant than he is. And you know, I thought about that for years, and this makes perfect sense to me. He was a stable guy. He could be most of those students' dad's age. Um, he was interesting. He was pretty caring. I remember um, observing a class of his. It was an advanced math class, and um, the students were all talking, talking a lot, talking a lot, talking a lot. And um, he went up in front of class, and he went there, and he said, OK, we're going to start class now. If you can open your book and it was silent, that's awesome. To me, that's more than having a class silent when you walk in there the whole time, is if they can talk. And if there's enough respect and culture there, that when you start talking, it's done. I've striven for that, actually, in our high school. So just think about that. It's interesting. You know, it's kind of the dad. I think it would be goal for us men to be at some point in your career a big brother and um, work on our way when you're 35 or older, really, to be the dad. And um, ladies, the same thing. They're your little sisters, um, even if you're in the same youth group <laughs> and you're their teacher. Big sisters, and then um, if you're still teaching um, ladies and you're a career teacher, the mom figure. You know, it's a blessing to be that way. Okay.
Um, I want to be your best friend, youth counselor. In the 1990s and the 2000s, um, the evangelicals really got into this culture of um, youth pastor, and youth pastors were very charismatic, and I, it's still around, and I think it's crept into our, our cultures a little bit. Um, younger people with young families, um, a lot of mentoring. Mentoring is good. It just needs to be structured, and mentors, mentors need to have mentors. And so um, they, they were adults that were pretty cool, spending an inordinate amount of time is probably with young people. And um, I've seen that sometimes even in our schools. And so what that can cause is that the teacher that does this and the students that he's involved with kind of view themselves as cooler than everybody else. And cool becomes a big deal. And it's hard to relate finally to that teacher's authority because the relationship was built on that. And then really hard to relate to other teachers who are just normal trying to do their thing. And so, um, I, my students are my friends. I don't tell them that like till they graduate. My children are my best friends in the whole world, even when they're like five. Some people say they're not their friends until they graduate. I just don't tell them that, but they are. We just love them, and I love my children so much. My like biological children, I love them, and they're my friends. So yeah, our our students are our friends, but um, the best friend thing that's just not appropriate, I think, when you're their teacher. Um, the I make fun of Mennonites guy. <laughs> I mean, you've probably heard of teachers that are just getting a little frustrated with our culture, so they make fun of the Mennonites to the students. Um, so I'll bring up the second point first. You probably shouldn't be teaching Mennonites because you don't like Mennonites, right? That's funny. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> just saying. Why is he here? Second one is, I mean, there's a teacher, and I mean, she just kept giving digs at the plain suit, digging at the plain suit, digging at our culture. And the crazy thing is is some of the youth the, that were in um, a, a part of, well, I won't tell you, I won't give anything away, but anyways, that I knew some of these youth, even some of the cooler youth that might not have been huge plain suit fans, they're kind of offended that their teacher was just giving those digs to plain suits. Um, are, are, we get so whacked out comparing ourselves with the world. If you were a worldly person, it's like cool to wear a plain suit. It like always has been. That's like what famous people do. But we look at it and think, well, we have to. And so the whole thing, you know, we just wear the thing. Anyways, so we just shouldn't give digs at our own culture like that. Oh, that's a terrible thing. So, um, and, and you know, I, there were, I understand other digs, you know. If you're in a school and you don't like the curriculum, for whatever reason, just don't do digs, you know, at our culture. We're here to build up a culture that I think is a beautiful thing that we have. And the last one, I don't, my, the outline I gave you is like five days old. Um, teachers edit these things until like an hour ago. And, um, and so my notes have more than yours. So um, the cheerleader, just be a cheerleader. But can you think of a blessing? I realize that we don't want to um, make our students all proud by blessing them. Um, I'd rather bless my students. I just love them, especially I, since I get to teach K through 12 every day, especially those little ones, just bless them. You know, our students at um, Shalom wear uniform, so all I've got to bless them on is those, um, the girls, how they braid their little hair, the guys in their little belts in their shoes and their watches, and the girls in their shoes. And I love shoes anyways. Be a cheerleader. Tell them how much you like what they do. It's okay. I really think it's. I don't think that's going to make them egomaniacs. I just think it's nice. Is it nice when somebody says something nice to you? It feels good to me. If I get a bad note from a child and I can't tell what the writing is and I don't know what the picture is that they drew, my day's made. That's it. It is made. I got something, a piece of candy on there, a poorly um, colored picture of a horse. My day is made. It's so nice. Think Barnabas, the encourager. You know, can we be that way to every single student you have every single day? Even the cool, tall basketball guys, um, it feels good. I had one guy, I told him, I, I love shoes, I like Vans, childhood thing. Anyways, in Converse, and I just said, you got Vans on, that looks nice. And um, he told me years later, he said, he said, I felt like I was on cloud nine because you said that to me. Man, I really meant it. I really do like Vans. Um, I don't like dude shoes as much, so I won't say that, but um, I mean, they're interesting. But, um, you know... <laughs> And he just, he said, I had no idea. It impacted this guy. He said, I felt so good. That was the first day of school. You found me and you met me and you said you like that. So.